Get on to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week three here in the Chaos Cup of the Mid-Atlantic Mauling League. I'm joined by Artificial Bunny tonight, and we've got the final game, the final streamed game of week three. Two games left in week three. One's going to be streamed. One's going to be played in about 30 minutes off stream. And uh, the one we're going to see, I've been waiting for it. Man, I've been looking forward for this. It's uh, the Themyscira Termigants versus the Dinnerbell Darlings, Merrick versus Doug Minotaur, Amazon versus Dwarves. What a matchup this is. I, Artificial Bunny, how you doing? I'm doing great. Ding, what do you ding, think about ding, this matchup? It's dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> the dinner bell is a ringing. What do you th What do you think about this? Just straight up on paper, what do you think about this matchup? I think Prime Day is about to get canceled. <laughs> oh, the poor Amazon team. <laughs> Let's take a look at the standings before we take a look at these rosters. Division A has finished up here in the week with the Masters of Mammal in first place, followed closely behind by your team, Artificial Buddy, the Poker Ratman in second place. Damaged Dragons coats by War Horseman, that's the Lizard team, they're in third. The Highlander is in fourth with McLeod's Maulers, that's a Necro team. The Dead Presidents, my team, we're in fifth place. The Baltimore Blitzers in sixth, followed by the Brewmeisters and Cetra's Skellies. We're going to shore up Division B here tonight. That's kind of catchy. Currently sitting in first place, but if the Dinner Bell Darlings can take a win here tonight, they will advance. They will take the first place spot for the first time in this competition in Division B away from Sweet Bunny, and that's kind of catchy. That's kind of catchy? No, I mispronounced that. That's kind of catchy. In third place, Skitter Twitch Die Die, coached by Berserker Tempest, a Skaven team. Lots of Skaven teams in this competition, three, I believe. The Carnivores by Nick Satan, that's a Kislev team. They're in fourth place. The Donkey Teeth are in fifth, followed by the current league champion, Clyphus, with his Brett team, Knights of Nuffle in sixth, Cody de Topa, and the Themyscira Turvigants looking for their first win here in this week in what may very well be their hardest matchup in the entire game of Blood Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> First up, we'll take a look at the Themyscira Turbigans. They're coming in at a TV of 10.40. They're going to have a full roster here. They are down a line woman. The number 15 line woman, Stratus, is out with a gouged eye. She'll be back next week. But he still has 11 players. Oscar the Thrower is leveled up as level 2. Picked up Accurate. That's going to give a plus 1 to her passes. Not bad at all. He's also leveled up the number 9 line woman, Flare has picked up the block skill that gives him five blodgers on this roster. And boy, I think he's going to need it tonight. He does have Keebler, the catcher. Uh, she has the catch skill, as catchers do. That's going to help out with all the catchy things. Catching a ball, catching a handoff, or uh, attempting an interception. Four team rerolls. That's, uh, that's quite a lot. He's got the oppo as well. He'll be up against... The Dinner Bell Darlings, coached by Doug the Minotaur. They're coming in at a TV of 1060. He, uh, this team as well is coming in with an 11-man roster. Kevin Bacon has leveled up. He's picked up the block skill. That means every single player on this scary, scary team has the block skill. All of these long beards here, <laughs> this this is the problem for the, the Termigans tonight. He's got seven long beards. They've got block. That's not bad. They have thick skulls. Okay, that's cool. 
But man, they've all got, <laughs> they've all got tackle. Tackle negates dodge, and that is what an Amazon team is all about. They're all about dodging. You saw on their roster that every single player starts with dodge, and half of Doug the Minotaur's team <laughs> just negates that. <laughs> That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Gravy Crockett, the number three troll slayer, He's coming, uh, he, being a troll slayer, he has Dauntless, he has Frenzy as well, that is sure to come into play tonight as well. Dauntless, not so much, but Frenzy, man, he could, he'll be looking for those surfs if he can get it. Three team rerolls, perfectly fine amount of rerolls for the Dinabell Darlings. One oppo, two fan factor. He's got the fan factor advantage. We'll see if that works out on the kickoff event table. Boy, <laughs> what? So I think I think we're in agreement here that the Dinnerbell Darlings are the clear favorite on paper tonight. Is there any disagreement there? Not at all. Not at but all. The Amazons still have a chance. They definitely have a passing advantage over the dwarves, and they've got a lot of speed on them. But it's going to be a tough match, I think. It is certain the Amazon team is certainly not out of it. So let's talk about what they can do to try to come out on top in this game. First of all, I think if they win the coin toss, it, do you? Th I think they go on defense. Is there any reason to go on offense in the first half? Not, not to my, <laughs> not to my mind. Ed. Yeah, I think he wants to be on defense first. That's going to guarantee that he has an eleven-player defense. So defense first. If he wins the coin toss, I think is the way to go. On defense, I think he wants to group up, right? I think he wants to keep his players contained together. I think he doesn't want to spread out. He doesn't have to screen out the Storvin team. Their big weakness is that they are so slow. They they can't move a whole lot. Uh, the the Themyscira Turbians definitely have the movement advantage just uh, across the entire roster, right? They have an MA of six all across the roster. Doug the Minotaur does have a runner. He does have an MA6 player, but uh, again, as a whole, this Amazon team has the speed advantage. And so I don't think he needs to screen out the pitch, right? I think generally speaking, dwarves like to stay together. They're gonna to cage up. They're gonna to try to move that cage down pitch. And if they're moving a cage, they're moving four at most. So the Themysteric Turbigans wanna to stick together and he wants to use those five blodgers to his advantage, right? He wants to set up his blodgers in such a way that he'll be able to strike back with them, get those two dies, Get the two dies with the block skill. Blodge is going to make them fairly resilient. There's only one face on the block die that's going to knock them down, and that's the that's the pal. That's the only thing that's going to knock these blisters to the ground. So, uh, so uh, I, I mean, I, I, what, what, that's what else do you do? <laughs> I think if you stick together, yeah, keep those blockers. Go ahead. He's just lucky that there isn't a lot of guard on the field. <laughs> Yeah, and the dwarf, the dwarven team is definitely going to start picking up guard as they level up. Um, I think that's how he wins out on defense. If he can stay grouped together and strike back with those blodgers, uh, so long as his players stay on the pitch, which isn't isn't a guarantee. They only have an AV of seven, but they all have blodge. I'm sorry, they all have dodge, which helps a little bit, and five of them have blodge, which help a whole lot. Um, he can come out on top. All he has to do is stop that run. If he can stop that run, even if he's down a few players, I think when it's his turn up on offense, then he can spread out. Then he can start playing his running game. He does have the thrower. He can threaten the pass as well. So long as he's got a reroll, which he's bound to have, he's got four on deck. Um, he can threaten the passing game as well. And then he can score when it's convenient for him. I really think this is going to come down to how this Amazon team holds up on defense. If they win out in the defensive game, I think they stand a good chance of coming out on top tonight. All right, both coaches are in Discord. We'll head over to Cabal TV and get this game underway. Twenty k difference in petty cash. Nothing's happening in the inducement phase. I love matchups like this. These like wildly imbalanced matchups. These are so fun to me. Absolutely does look like uh, Merrick is on defense. Does it? Did he set up? Or, oh, sorry, yeah. Offense. No, he might be on defense. No. So this looks this looks like a defensive formation to me. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Yeah. Fa oh, my goodness. The fame advantage went to the Turbicans as well. He's got the plus one fame advantage. Thank Nuffle for that. We'll see if that works out for him. <laughs>
Yeah, so the Dinnerbell Darlings are going to be on offense to start this game. Turvigans must have won the coin toss. Here's the kick. Quick snap, Dinnerbell Darlings are going to get the move into one adjacent square to start this game. Bet they like that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. When you're only moving four, you'll take a you'll take 25% of your movement for free. They can even get that Troll Slayer on the line if they want. Middling kick for the Turbigans. Turn one now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Three team rerolls. They are absolutely going to block down this line. This poor line, this is a sacrificial line. They are going to get beaten up. Their job is to stay alive for as long as possible, but man, that's not going to happen if he keeps rolling pals. <laughs> Didn't break armor. Two more blocks to take. Double skulls. He's going to have to spend a reroll here. He's going to get the knockdown. Wow. He's down to two rerolls. Final two die on the line. This works out well as well because of the block skill. Remember, every single player on this team now has block. Gets a stun on the line. I, I think Merrick, Merrick is okay with this. <laughs> They're still alive. <laughs> He's okay. Clyphe is really praying to Nuffle. Two die Blitz over on the right side. This is against one of the Blodgers. The number five Blitzer stays alive. Uh, uh, Ironhard seven armor. <laughs> yeah, they, they've they've had their uh, their armorer, their blacksmith, hard at work for this game. Good pick up due to the sure hand skill. It's gonna cage up on his own four yard line. That's it. Turn one to the Turbigans. So you saw Doug the Minotaur uh, targeted this outside Blitzer here. I think I think the Turbigans can take advantage of this. I think they could set back up, take their own uh, Blitz out here, and then reset. They have their, their Blodgers here, 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 and here. This gives them lots of mobility, lots of options to move them around and take the, take the Blitz that they want to take. Or they could even go after uh, Soy Rogers. That, oh. He's going to go after uh, Queso Bill instead. I think this is fine. I would have I would have arranged this a little differently. He's going to end up putting two blodgers here in the right wide zone. We'll see if it works out. He's going to get a push result out of it. I think I would have brought in a line woman for the assist and then taken the blitz with a blodger, and then my blodgers could, could stay free to kind of roam the pitch. Took the place before standing up because he's dodging away. That's what he wants to do. Doug the Minotaur trying to pick off one of these players here with this uh, positioning of Soy Rogers. Oh, I would have I would have kept the player right there. <laughs> Took the 50-50 dodge. He's not going to re-roll it. Lita's Ooh. injured. That's how this game's going to go. At least one it's man. only a badly hurt. <laughs> she, she stays alive. One man player advantage for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Oh, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he's using the, the oppo on that. <laughs> Clefie says, "Not an injury on an Amazon player. No one could have predicted this outcome." Turn two for the Dinnerbell Darlings. They have no blocks to take. They're going to be down to just a blitz here. That's what the Amazon team ideally wants to do. I suspect we're going to see this ball cross the line of scrimmage to the Turvigan's two-yard line. First up, perhaps a blitz in the right wide zone. Lots of marks being taken by the Dinnerbell Darlings, as you do, right? Two-die blitz. Another pal for the Darlings. Breaks armor, and that's a KO. Two-man player advantage now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Hey. 
The ball's going to move across the line of scrimmage to the four-yard line. See what marks the dinner bell darlings take with these two players. Probably all of them. <laughs> Decided to pick off number 11. Turn two for the Turbigans. They can reset their defense in front of the cage. Holly, the number 12 line woman, moves in front of this cage here in turn two. Turbigan, looks like they're setting up columns here. I don't I don't think they need to. That's alright. Typically you'd set up this column defense here like this, a column here, two spaces, another column, and so on. You do this to prevent a faster team from blitzing a single player and then running through the hole. It seems just not that fast. Personally, and I'm, I'm not playing Amazon, so <laughs> who's to say if I'm right here? But uh, personally, I think you want to keep these blitzers uh, able to, or I'm sorry, these blodgers able to go where you want them to go, where you need them to go. Yeah, it does kind of look like he's trying to funnel him into the void zone there yeah which would not be a bad move if if doug the minotaur ends up taking the bait and it looks like you could get a surf on uh the medusa the blitzer here with uh just a little bit of just a little bit of luck <laughs> a push on a block and then a a, a frenzy Blitz by the Troll Slayer. Yeah. Takes a blitz on the front right, uh, front left corner of the cage. Gets a push result. Takes a block. Gets a knockdown on number 10. These knockdowns are huge for this Dwarven team. It costs 3 MA to stand up. They only have 4 MA. Fail the dodge. Thanks. Oh, Ooh. thanks. No, no surf needed. <laughs> oh no! Ooh. Medusa with a broken. I imagine Apo's gonna get spent here. Yeah, I have. I have to imagine so. We'll see if Medusa's there gonna stay go. on this roster. No a. She's going to stay in the game and on the roster, otherwise she was sure to get sacked. Three-man player advantage now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. With all Pretty this nice tack... When... <laughs> Pretty nice when your opponent takes themselves out like that. <laughs> it is. <laughs> With all this tackle, I think uh, I think he has to be a, a little more um, careful with which dodges he takes. So, if we were to reset this back to the line of scrimmage before before the half started, I would just assume my linemen are dead, right? Like they're just gonna die. And on that assumption, whenever they get knocked down, I'm just gonna stand them back up to take another hit. And, and just the longer they stay there, the the longer the rest of my team stays alive. I kind of feel like that dodge with the blitzer was the right move, but it just didn't work out. It's tough when when the only thing you have, like the thing that your money is spent on is a team that dodges and you can't use the skill. This defense uh, tattered at this point. They're getting picked off here by the Dinner Bell Darlings. Hmm. 
48 seconds left in turn number three for Doug the Minotaur. Turn three back to the Turbigans now. Eight players on the pitch. It's going to start with a blitz. Ooh, one, one die blitz. Two. Wow, Good. one die blitz <laughs> on the Troll Slayer. Oh, he's going to break armor. What? Got a stun. Wow. Wow. Has plenty of movement left with number nine, the Blitzer. Or rather, the line woman who blitzed. Gonna get the assist here on number nine, the Sunday Kid. Gets another pal here. He's looking for that 10 plus. Probably not gonna follow up. Good dodge by the number three catcher. Amazon catchers, they, they are not weak. They are Amazons. They have a strength of three, which is great for a catcher. And they'll take the package right to your front door. <laughs> Another good dodge here by the, the Turbigans. Do you think he tries to dodge away Bailey, or is he fine just leaving her prone on the ground? I would imagine the dodge is imminent. <laughs> <laughs> good call! <laughs> Spends the reroll here. I mean, agility three isn't bad, but he's losing a lot of those rolls. He is. It's uh, it's a little more scary than it seems, too, right? Like, yeah, you're right. It's not bad in terms of the game of Blood Bowl, but it's a two thirds shot on on these dodges for him uh, with his tackle skills. So that's that's still kind of scary. Dinnerbell Darlings here in turn four once again find themselves with no blocks to take. They'll be limited to their blitz. And here it is. Two die blitz. Going to be a dodge put. I'm sorry. It's going to be a knockdown due to that dang tackle skill. Got a stun on Molly Holly. I don't think I noticed Paul Funyon's name before. <laughs> Pretty great name. <laughs> Dinner Bell Darlings here with a pretty comfortable offense here in the first half. They have all but secured this right wide zone all to themselves. Oh boy, final turn of the first quarter here. Three players that are unmarked for this Amazon team. That's always rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and four of them uh, effectively picked off here. So these four are in the wrong position, uh, unless they're going to swing around and play 
apply some pressure to the back of the cage, uh, which he could do. I think that's on defense. I think that's a, another uh, powerful option for him. If he can stop the forward movement, he can swing one, maybe two blotters behind the cage. And then just uh, eventually this Dwarven team will have to take some blocks that uh, or, or roll some dice that they don't want to roll. Two die blitz in the back left corner of the cage. Gets a pow. Oh, that's good. Man, she just leaps right in there. She's, she's, <laughs> she's not fooling around. Marks the ball carrier. Oh, wow. Good dodge here by number 14. How do you pronounce that? N Nade heart? Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Needert, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Needert. Needert. That sounds that sounds better. Thirty seven seconds left for the Themyscira Turbigans. I still have a mark player uh, kind of in middle uh, center pitch here, kind of doing nothing. It's Bailey, the number 11 line woman. We'll see where he tries to put her. I imagine he's going to try to dodge her out and put her somewhere uh, a little more effective. Oh, I don't know if I like this. Went for the foul. Oh, 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 got a stun out of it. Not bad. Didn't get called off. Did not. Got two assists on that foul. Turn five now. Second quarter begins for the Dinnerbell Darlings. One blitz could put this ball into the end zone. But he's not going to take it. He's going to take the blitz. On the ball carrier first. He's gonna get the pal here. He's gonna break armor. Oh no, Ooh. she's dead. Straight up murdered. Flare is dead. The oppo's been spent. R.I.P. <laughs> Mike C.A. says rip. Rip indeed. Oh wait. Do the Turbigans not get this player back? <laughs> Do the Turbigans... <laughs> I mean, it's thinking for the bits. <laughs> right, you'll have to remind me, uh, Artificial Bunny, do the, do the Turbigans not get this player back as a zombie to play for them? Uh, that's how it works, right? That's how I thought it was supposed to work. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just my delightful little thing that I get to do with my undead team. <laughs> Dinnerbell Darlings are going to set up their loose cage here at mid pitch. Ball's going to move up to the 18 yard line. Oh, no, going for the handoff to score. Gotta level up General Custard. Yeah, well done. If he doesn't get knocked down. I don't know who's gonna get there. There is... Looks like New Dart could get there, and... I mean... Asuka to give it two dice. But she can kind of get it's... there. <laughs> it's, that's, that's quite the... <laughs> that's quite the approach. Oh, I, I missed Paul Funyun there. <laughs> Old Paul Funyun <laughs> holding down, holding down the 24 yard line. I have the view switched around the other way. Ah, I see. I see. <laughs> Didn't see him behind the, the brights. <laughs> he was hiding. Sets up the two die on number 11, gets a push out of it.
has a one die against a troll slayer currently. Takes the one die block against the troll slayer. It's going to be a both standing result. Is he going to try it again now? Still has a prone player to stand up as well. If he wants to stand that player up, he probably should do that first. Taking the one die block, it's a push. Dodge to a foul. Two assists on this foul. Like it. <laughs> oh. Got sent off. <laughs> Didn't break armor. And that is what? Five, a five man player advantage now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Well, you can't be killed if you're sent off the pitch. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Dinner Bell Darlings almost certainly going to stall till turn eight at this point. Oh, this, this Amazon team has been massacred. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he started on defense. <laughs> it really only got one dead player. <laughs> That's very true. Hey, there's only one dead person. <laughs> so far. Gets a stun on the two die here. <laughs> Looks like that'll be it here uh, for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They might shift the ball here, here, but they're probably fine. Yeah, just shifts them over a space. Turn six coming up for the Turbigants. You know what? At this point, at this point, just go for it. Take number 14 here. Make all these dodges. <laughs> oh, you coward. <laughs> he moves the ball carrier out to safety. <laughs> the Turbigans are going to focus down on the Sunday kid. <laughs> Two die block on the Sunday kid's going to be double skulls. Re rolls it. It's the Fair enough. time. <laughs> yeah, it's late in the half. It's cool. Currently, no assists on uh, what I believe is going to be the inevitable foul on number nine. He could try to apply pressure to this cage, and uh, if he can get away with it, he can get a, a turn or two to, to pass the ball around and gain some SPP. Here's the foul. One assist on this foul on number nine. I approve of this tactic. <laughs> Doesn't get caught off. Doesn't get anything out of the out of the foul. Number eleven, I'm Bailey. Kind of I'm a little surprised that they're not trying to do that on the troll slayer. Yeah, he's he's the big money guy. Last... <laughs> <laughs> the dinner bell darlings <laughs> are pulling back to say, "Who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing? You're picking on my friend."
Troll Slayer takes a mark against Keebler. There's another three catcher at uh, center pitch here. Ball carrier is just going to run toward the sideline. I think you can afford to pull another player back. Yeah, but would they get there in two turns? That's very, very <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a thick skull. Just GFI. You'll be fine. <laughs> Here's the two die blitz on the number 14 line woman gets yet another pal. Gets a stun. He was looking for more at this point. Man, so many pals. Turn seven for the Turbigans. Ice are pretty hot tonight. <laughs> for one of these teams. <laughs> Two dice stand up. Blitz is going to get the push. I would have re-rolled it at this point. <laughs> it's, I just, I just go. We'll see if he takes the one die on the troll slayer. It's one die unskilled. Got the two die with the assist from the Blitzer on the big Ragu, the number 10 Longbeard over in the right wide zone. This time gets a pal. It's so hard to take these dwarves off the pitch. They are so resilient. AV9, thick skull. They have block. Good dodge by Asuka. She's just going to run away. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to try to run to safety. And she says, fend for yourselves, girls. I'm out. <laughs> Is that foul time again? <laughs> hey, maybe trying to set up for the dodge foul here. You get two assists with it. Fail the dodge, though. Turn eight for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Are they just going to score or are they going to take some blocks first? They have a reroll. I think they take some blocks. Yes, indeed. Two die block. <laughs> Yet another pal. Gets stunned. Won't matter. Blitz still on the table. Doug the Minotaur's feeling a little cheeky. Maybe he goes in for the foul on the catcher. He could get two assists. He could get three assists <laughs> on a foul on the catcher. Here's the blitz. Gets a push. Oh, he doesn't have a bribe. He wouldn't. He wouldn't foul without uh, without scoring. Gets the knockdown on the Frenzy follow-up block. Doesn't get anything out of it. I think that'll do it. He'll just score here. One to zero. The Dinderbell Darlings will take the lead with one turn left in the first half. Oh, man, that was a bloodbath. <laughs> and then some. Oh, Clive is thinking for the bits. Oh, my goodness. I'm... I'm just glad that drive's over. <laughs> I was... <laughs> so they're only three down now. <laughs> that was scared Turbians with, uh, with three. Three players off the pitch. Three-man player advantage for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Uh, they're just going to sacrifice their line here. The Turbigans are going to try to take all these blocks if they can. I'm hoping for some armor breaks here. <laughs> I'm sure Merrick is too. He's leaving one reroll on the table. He'll have one to spend. Looks like he's leaving 
Two players back to receive, one to pick up the ball and one to throw it to. Oh boy, but, that would have been scary. That's not bad. Right, that would have been scary if it weren't this turn. <laughs> Like this demands death. The dwarfs must die. Go for the ball pickup first. Fails to pick up, he'll spend the reroll. And that's it! <laughs> that's the end of the first half! <laughs> <I'm> disappointed. <laughs> One to zero at the half, the Dinnerbell Darlings are going to be in the lead here. They're going to be on defense here in the second half. The Termigants do have an opportunity here to get back on the board. They're going to be down three players. I don't think that puts them out by any stretch of the imagination, but man, again, this is this is such a tough matchup for them. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but they can pull it off, I think. At least a draw. Yeah, yeah, they can certainly try to play for the draw here. Mike C.A. asks, is this soccer or blood bowl? <laughs> and I think that's what the uh, Turbigans are doing at this point. They're playing for the draw. If they can score, if they... I, I think they could score... I don't know, turn 12 and feel pretty comfortable? It's going to depend on how many players left on the pitch, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, it does take those dwarves an awfully long time to get the ball down the pitch. Yeah. Terrigan setting up with six players on the line here. Two back to receive. I don't know if he needs this many players on the line. I'd probably pull... I'd... I'd Put four on the line to get the two dies across. I'd split the others out wide, I think. I don't know. You're down three players. I don't know. Maybe I'd put one in the halfback position and one wide. I'm not sure. Or just keep them all center pitch and just try to try to run your way down the down the <laughs> center. Here's kick. The Turbigans. Boy. <laughs> Five Boy, they got Man. <laughs> oh, no, a shallow kick. They're going to have to secure that ball ASAP. I wonder if that was on purpose. Doug Minsard does not have a kicker, so could have been on purpose. <laughs> it just could have been a wild kick. Oh boy! There goes that extra reroll. GFI to get on the ball. Failed the first roll, as we all know. GFIs fail 900% of the time. That's what one in six means. Clypheus graciously triggers the GFI failure warning. <laughs> oh, these blocks are <laughs> nerve wracking now. No reroll left for the Turbigans this turn. Two players on the ball now. A little comforting now. <laughs> Takes this, uh, the next two die block on the line, gets a pal finally on Paul Funyon. That's going to free up number five, Medusa. She'll get onto the ball. Final two die at the line here. Basler. Oh, he's going to pick up the ball. Oh, boy. Didn't work out. At least it was a favorable scatter. That's going to be a turnover. He's left with two players left to action. Turn nine now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. <laughs> Boot polish telling us of the legend that he once saw. He, he was rumored to have seen a GFI succeed once in the long, long ago. Some say it looked like a dragon. It was probably a bull centaur. 
those, those extra legs make all the difference. <laughs> Dinnerball darlings, they're going to mark down this line. They're going to try to keep them right where they are. I imagine we're going to see some incoming pressure on this uh, would-be cage. There's the first mark on Medusa. That's by the Troll Slayer, Gravy Crockett. Here's the Blitz. Two die Blitz on Medusa. It's going to be a push result. He will naturally follow up on this block. <laughs> Takes a mark on Asuka, the number one thrower. Oh boy, this Amazon team. <laughs> they, they've got to be feeling <laughs> feeling pretty flustered at this point. Well, they have drawn an awful lot of those dwarves over to the side, so... We'll see if he can capitalize on that in any way whatsoever. Normally, that'd be a great thing. Those dwarves are not fast. If they're stuck on one side, they're not going to get to the other side in one turn. Turn 10 now for the Turvigants. Exactly two players unmarked on the pitch. Three-man player advantage for the Dunerbell Darlings. <laughs> Clifey says, did you know? That blotch against dwarves is surprisingly unhelpful. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> yeah, if they go for the pickup first, they... I think they have a shot. Went for the blitz first, got the knockdown here on Soy Rogers. I will, che I will cheer sure. so hard if they can get any KO whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they freed up the thrower to get the ball at least. Man, do you think he can secure this ball at all? Or do you think do you think there might be like a punt in his future? I I have to admit, imagine that they're going to go for the pickup soon. Both down results uh, on the line here, on the right side of the line, is going to result in both standing due to the block skill on both players. Forty seconds left in turn ten for the Turvigans. They still have a reroll. They've spent their blitz. Here's the ball pick up with the thrower. It succeeds, but now what? I know I'd be falling back. <laughs> Just to get some breathing room. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to pull back to his own 16 yard line. Just to give him, give himself some space, give himself another turn where he can try to make something happen, make some decisions, try to figure out where this ball is going to go. And now the catcher can get free, and they can threaten that pass. Not like that. <laughs> that is not a likely dodge to... Uh, yeah, this is a 5+, plus, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, spent the reroll, got the stun, or got stunned for his trouble as well. Turn 10 for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Two die block double skulls on the right side of the line. Spends the reroll, gets the pow. Oh boy. Oh. oh. <laughs> this Amazon team is getting brutalized. It's like they took more than five minutes for a bathroom break. <laughs> Put another injury on the board for them. Wow. 
Two die block, got the pow. Another two die almost certainly coming up against China, the number seven Blitzer. I'd say Keebler's probably getting blitzed. Maybe by the Troll Slayer this time. Now, Keepler is an old elvish name, right? <laughs> it is! <laughs> Wood elves, in fact. I heard they made cookies. <laughs> Frenzy follow-up could not knock down China. Wow. Thank goodness for block. <laughs> wow, well done by China. <laughs> Clefie says, boo. <laughs> Knock her down, boo. Yeah! Turn 11 for the Turbigans now. I'm going to, if you're new to Blood Bowl, I'm going to tell you what's, uh, what's going wrong here. So you can see the Turbigans have this player here, this player here, these three players here, this player here and this player here. The problem is he's missing a whole bunch of other players. See, you don't want to be missing players. You want to have players. That's that's a that's a big mistake that new Blood Bowl players make. Uh, they think, hey, do I want less players or more players? Nope, you want more players. You want to have 11 players, ideally, on the pitch. Uh, and if you can do that, then uh, <laughs> you're golden. See, his problem. See, see, he has all of his players over here. That's not where you want your players. You don't want to set them up over here. You want to set them up on the pitch for the games being played. <laughs> I, I think the problem is, is one of them is named after a wood elf. So <laughs> wood elves, they're solitary creatures. So you can usually get by with just three. He brought this on himself. <laughs> Stand up, one die, Blitz with Phoenix. He's going to get the knockdown on Paul Funyan. good. He'll follow up to get the assist on the uh, block on the big Ragu. He's going to break armor. Gets a stun. Two die block gets another knockdown here. Oh, I thought for sure he'd follow up here and try to break away the Blitzer down pitch. Let's see, where can Asuka throw to? Asuka can throw to... Looks here, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. She can throw to the opposing six-yard line right now. Keebler breaks free. She's now in the right wide zone. Uh, can she get surfed from here? Where's the Troll Slayer? All the way on the other side. Uh, no threat there. Spend the reroll here on this dodge. He's down to two. Works out. Lots of movement left with the number seven blitzer, but three seconds left. I'm gonna pull her back to. I I don't know what she's doing, but that's all right. I don't know what else you do with her. <laughs> Boot polish says, "Oh, you better watch out. Keebler can get surfed three turns from now." <laughs> Turn 11 for the dinner bell darlings. Takes a mark on number 11. Takes a two die against number 8. Gets a pal. Hey. 
Doug has really got to save some of those pals for the rest of us. Really? He's just hogging all the pals. Share some pals. <laughs> Marks the number three catcher. No tackle, at least. It's true. No tackle. That's a blitzer. Sends a second player over to the right wide zone. He's trying to leave this catcher with nowhere to go. It would be uh, just way too many dodges uh, to try to break free. Good positioning on uh, the number seven blitzer here. She's got nowhere to go. That's not a dodge now. Turn 12 for the Themyscira Turbigans. Do you think Merrick's just counting the turns until this game is over? <laughs> Stands up number eight. Basler. Near the line of scrimmage here, there's this little scrum going on. Takes the one die blitz, gets a skull. He's going to have to re-roll this, gets a push. Thank goodness for the... that extra re-roll. <laughs> yeah. Decides to follow up. And then dodges away. So he gets the number 11 line woman, Bailey, down pitch. But she is currently too far away from Asuka. Asuka can get into position to throw. All right, this is a one, two, one, two. This is a long pass, just barely a long pass right now. He can't make it any shorter, so if he's going to throw... Yep, here it is. Good pass! Intercepted! Oh. oh, no. Boy, this Dwarfin team, they have been practicing this week, huh? <laughs> Went for the log pass. Successful pass, but got intercepted. In this version of the game, you actually roll the interception roll first. So uh, it's not technically a, a successful pass. It's a little counterintuitive. They've changed that around in BB 2020. But you roll for interceptions first, then you roll the pass, then you roll the catch. <laughs> Mike C.A. says, what do you mean? It was a successful pass to a dwarf, clearly. <laughs> Two die blitz coming up. On well, the number eight blitzer, Basler, gotta get not uh, gotta get knocked down here due to the tackle skill. Boot polish asks, "How high did that dwarf jump? Can dwarves even jump?" <laughs> they have springs built into their boots. <laughs> With the Dinnerbell Darlings in possession of this ball, it is going to be all but impossible for the Turbigans to get to reclaim this ball here. <laughs> Mike C says, you see, here's a little science fact for you. Because the dwarves have a lower center of gravity. No, it's because they're denser. It's because they're so dense. <laughs> <laughs> that their their gravity is stronger. <laughs> it just it warps the ball down to their position. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Another stun. Three stuns on the bitch. <laughs> oh, this poor team. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this wasn't a game. It was a massacre. <laughs> Two die black gets the push. He'll get another two die with number five here on China. Another push. Boo Polish asks, can we move Duck to Division A? Hey man, <laughs> everybody voted. <laughs> you all wanted this. <laughs> I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> 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 oh, another KO. That's what? A 47 man player advantage for the dinner bell darlings? Five man player advantage. I look at it less as a KO and more as safe from the massacre. Right, safety. <laughs> well, just three players left to action. Two are free. <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna bring he's gonna bring Oski in for the uh, the mark to get the assist on number five, General So. Here it is, two dice skilled block. Oh, he's gonna get a knockdown. Oh, can we get a a ten plus? Oh dear, Nuffle, please. <laughs> <laughs> One minute, six, six seconds left for the Termigants, but there's not a whole lot of decisions left, left to make. <laughs> I think that's going to be it. Turn 13, <laughs> back to the Dinner Bell Darlings. Fourth quarter for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Four turns left. Uh, they've got this ball all but shored up. Boy. <laughs> Did we mention this is a bad matchup for the Amazon team? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it would be a little less one-sided with the new uh, Amazon rules, but... Yeah, in BB2020, it's a little better. They've got some strength four players, which would help a little bit. <laughs> Quite. You can see just how much pitch pitch control uh, the Dinner Bell Darlings are exerting here. Uh, this ball, this ball is just going to scoot into the safety of this pocket here, and he'll hang out for the next four turns. Will we see a foul <laughs> by the Turbigans? At this point, uh, that's like your best bet of keeping your players alive. <laughs> I was thinking by the dinner bell darlings. Uh, <laughs> if I'm up by five players, I'm fouling probably every turn, <laughs> every single turn. Takes a mark on Bailey. Here's the blitz. Troll Slayer Blitz! He's taking the push. Here's the follow up. Two die follow up. Gets the pow. Boy. Boy, oh boy. Breaks armor and gets a KO. Six man player advantage for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Very merciful KO. <laughs> <laughs> Just five players left on the pitch for the Themyscira Turbigants. I say, just pick your target and go murder them. Just go murder them. Or you could be a hero and try to get this ball. Can't get it on this turn. It's 
like Paul Funyon. Paul Funyon's the target. If he wants to take a block and then, yeah, and then uh, do the foul, takes the block first, then he can set up, uh, then he can set up his assists. Got the pal here after rolling double skulls. No more rerolls left for the Turbigans. They had five! If he wants to take this foul, currently has two assists. He could make it four assists. Here it is, four assists on this foul. Asuka's out for some vengeance. <laughs> Got a KO! Hey! All right. <laughs> Way to go! <laughs> Termigants, well done! Look at that! Turn 14 got their KO! Wonderful, beautiful, huzzah! <laughs> and now the entire dwarf team descends upon them. <laughs> oh, for three turns! <laughs> Two die blitz gets a push here. Oh, he mercifully scored! Two to zero! <laughs> The Dinnerbell Darlings increase their lead. The Turbigans have two turns, I believe. If they have two turns, I want them to get on the board. Let's go. <laughs> get back one KO'd player. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> the KO didn't last long <laughs> for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Five man player advantage for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Two turns left in this ball game. Turbigans find themselves with no rerolls after having five. <laughs> Maybe there'll be a pitch invasion. <laughs> or a <rain>. sure. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that works. <laughs> oh, the Turbigans get a reroll. <laughs> a deep kick for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Berserker Tempest, that's exactly right. <laughs> he gets a pit. <laughs> Pity reroll, and then Nuffle immediately made him spend it on a double skulls. <laughs> oh God! Oh boy! <laughs> Final two nine block gets a lock. Gets a two nine block. He's gonna get a knockdown on the big ragu. Oh boy. All right, just just send China down, bitch. Just go for it. You got this, buddy. <laughs> oh no, go, go, score. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Failed the pickup, doesn't have the reroll. I'll turn 15 back to the dinner belt, Arlings. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Clytus has all my prayers earlier attracted Novel's attention in this game for sure. <laughs> yeah, isn't that League uh, tradition where if you get a free reroll, you have to immediately spend it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs>
The Turrigans just have to get through five more minutes and ten seconds. <laughs> and the nightmare is over. <laughs> Who will survive? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully someone, but at this pace, maybe no one. <laughs> To die blitz on Medusa. It's gonna be a both standing result. Nuffle showing mercy for once. That's right. <laughs> no more blocks to take. Two GFIs. <laughs> What are, you, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Stretching those stubby little legs. You're just showing off. <laughs> oh, is that what he's doing? Is he trying to make them safe? <laughs> oh, no, that's what he's doing. He got he got protection in position for the runner, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon's now in scoring position. He wants to win this three to zero. You know, that's fair. <laughs> totally fair. Totally fair. Oh. Let's do some more go for it. <laughs> Just keep chucking dice. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> final oh. turn. Mercifully, the final turn. For the Themyscira Turbigans. Uh, at this point, uh, just just punt. Just punt the ball. <laughs> he can't score if the ball's behind him. No, that's not true. He could hand off to Kevin Bacon. Good pickup by Keebler. That's, that's, that's not going to help. <laughs> He's got to protect Keebler. <laughs> oh, fan pass. You know what? Well done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, was, I was kind of expecting a catch. <laughs> <laughs> Final turn of this game. Uh, Doug the Minotaur, if he wants to score, he's going to have to work for it now. He does have a reroll. Yeah, let's see a dwarf pass. <laughs> He's got to do something. Yeah, the ball had to be within this little cone here um, in order for... The ball had to be in this cone here in order for him to be able to score with two GFIs. Now it's it's really tough. Oh no, he found a GFI. <laughs> Trying to get the, ass the assist on the blitz here. Gets a push. All right, nothing left to do now but to try to score. Let's see if he can do it. Good. It's a good pickup. It's a good pickup. Let's see if the handoff works. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Two GFIs. Two GFIs. <laughs> Let's see him trip. Let's see him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well done! <laughs> the dinner bell darlings are going to win this one 3 to 0. Wow, good TD. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Ooh.
Well, that, <laughs> that was that was less a game of Blood Bowl. That was just a straight up murder. <laughs> Three to zero to the belt, Arlene's. <laughs> Those Amazons just got dwarfed. Well said, Mike CA. <laughs> Dinner Bell Darlings. I'm going to take this one. Uh, you can see they dominated ball possession in this game. Uh, and again, this I, I honestly think this is the worst matchup for Amazon in the entire game. Amazon versus Dwarves. Oh. <laughs> SPP. Five for the Themyscira Turbigans. They're only going to get their MVP. The Dinner Bell Darlings are going to come out with 20. 20 SPP, but a well-deserved, uh, a well-deserved uh, pool of SPP for the night. Basler is going to be the MVP for the Turbigants. Wyatt Burp is the MVP for the Dinnerbell Darlings. I don't even think he did anything. <laughs> That's going to do it for week. For one block. <laughs> right, he just sat there. <laughs> That's going to do it for week uh, three. Uh, actually, let's take a look at the schedule. One game left in the week. It's uh, probably being played as we speak. That's Donkey Teeth versus Cody Dutopa. Playing right now, it's not going to be aired. Um, but that means that week four is going to start tomorrow. Hey! It means we're at the halfway point, man. That's We're at the halfway point of regulation play in the Chaos Cup. I, I can't believe we're already there. It's been a great couple of weeks so far. It's been the best competition yet. I mean, these games are great. I, I like the meta in uh, in the Chaos Cup here with the, the team picks. Um, we've had a ton of really fun games, a ton of exciting games, and I think there's more to come, right? We've got another uh, four weeks, another four weeks in the Chaos Cup, and then the cut to top four, and then we've got three more competitions in the season. Uh, when week four gets scheduled, you'll be able to check that schedule out and get alerted to those scheduled games on our website at www. Yeah, that's hard to say. www.mammal.club here on Twitch or on our social uh, media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk. We have a new episode that's going to come out uh, next week. Uh, and you can watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Play Blood Bowl. Where else can you be a dwarf and just murder a team <laughs> of Amazons? <laughs> you can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 on Steam. That's the way we play here in the league. Soon to be Blood Bowl 3 and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Artificial Bunny, thanks for joining me once again tonight. Thanks for having me out. All right. And until uh, week four, enjoy your Monday, everyone. And play more Blood Bowl. Indeed. <laughs>